Greetings out there in YouTube land. This is Morris Man. As always, I thank you guys for coming to my channel. And just want to report in that I'm feeling a little better than I did yesterday. So I guess I'm on the right road to improvement or better, you know, getting back to normal. And again, I thank you well wishes for, you know, chiming in to make sure that I'm okay. And I haven't took a dirt nap yet because I'm not ready for the dirt nap. But who is when it's time for the dirt nap? But anyway, uh, I'm going to do a video that I think is important for the beginners and the intermediate. Knowledge is king. You know, when you pass on the right stuff, you know, it's just, it's can can go wrong. You know, so this video is going to be entitled, you know, where do you go to buy your guitars? And I'm going to speak on to talk about four places. Two of them are really good, two of them are really bad. So I'm just going to balance it out here. So I'm going to go with the first two good ones. And the first one is eBay. Now, I know you've heard me trash eBay over the last seven months. And the reason being is, uh, you know, the customer's always right. That's the saying in business. But the customer's not always right when they're running a scam. And they get away with it, you know. So, nowadays, I'm just a buyer. I'm pretty safe just being a buyer because I was selling some stuff on eBay. And that's when kind of the, the, the blank hit the fan, so to speak. So, uh. You're pretty safe when you're just buying stuff because eBay do have a vast amount of good stuff to purchase, you know, so uh, you don't want to kind of shut that down. And, uh, you know, the guitars that I've bought from guitar from eBay, I haven't had any problems, you know, uh, and eBay is pretty kind of strict on policy now where, you know, they want you to sell quality stuff. And if you're not, you're not going to be on there too long. So uh, highly recommend eBay. Just don't recommend it from a seller's standpoint because you go through a lot of crap. But uh, the second one is uh, Music Go Round. Music Go Round, what I like about them is they're composed of uh, professional musicians. And they state, you know, in their, you know, their policy that they go over their guitars and their instruments before they send them to you. So they, they make sure that this, you know, uh, your guitar got a pretty good setup, you know, good strings on there. Uh, you get very next day shipping in most cases, which is unbelievable. If I order it Monday, it shows up on my door Tuesday. So you can't go wrong, go wrong with music go around because uh, you can find some pretty good prices. So uh, I highly recommend music go around and I highly recommend eBay. Now, let's talk about the two ones that I don't recommend. Uh, I really don't recommend Craigslist because, uh, you know, you're lucky if you can sift through the scams because it's infested with scams and find a good deal. You know, so uh, and it can be dangerous sometimes, too. And then a lot of times, once they get your email, they start sending you spam. So uh, <clears throat> I really wouldn't go recommend the, the, the Craigslist thing, you know, because you got people that want you to meet them halfway. And I, and I tell these people, I'm like, if you go to Guitar Center by Guitar, they're not going to meet you halfway in some uh, cafe or something like that. Because the rationale is supposed to be, I don't want to go to your house. I don't trust you. I can kill you outside. You know, so it's just nonsense. No one's coming to your house to harm you because it's easy for them to be detected as far as they were the ones that showed up at your house. So just that that argument has no validation or it's not valid at all. It's just some garbage because you got some lazy ass people that don't want to go pick up an item and want you, you to meet them somewhere halfway inconveniencing you. It's like, no, I'm not going there, not doing that. So, uh. That's that's the, the Craigslist uh, reverb, you know, dot com. I've tried to give them a chance on several occasions and <clears throat> they're not coming up good. You know, uh, over the last two months, I've purchased three guitars. I've had to send two of them back. And the two that I sent back, I didn't even have to plug in to the amp or just test out the sound because I know it was garbage. You know, uh, one guitar. Let me just say something positive first. Uh if you're looking for a good guitar as far as a beginner, intermediate, I, I can't promote or endorse uh, Jay Tercy guitars. No, I can't. I uh, can't get out. Uh, can't get it out. Jay Tercy, great guitars. If you're looking for a good beginner guitar, intermediate guitar, Jay Tercy is the company. They make some really good guitars. I've had at least within the last three years, I've had maybe about 11 of them. Love them all. Had no complaints with none of them. They make very good guitars. Uh, they're very attention to detail as far as action, because that's the first thing I look at when I pull a guitar out that box or the case, checking the action. If the action's good, we good. If the action's not good, got to go back. And they're reasonably priced. You know, uh, you know they get 
Strat copies for about $119 free shipping on some sites. And, and they're good guitars. They look good. They sound good. They play. You know, they, they look good, feel good, and sound good. You know, so uh, I can't say enough about them. You know, uh, if you're interested in, you know, purchasing a pretty good guitar. Because another thing that I like about them, because whoever running Jay Turster is thinking. I mean, really thinking. Because uh, they offer you colors that Fender would normally offer you for an additional $200 just for the paint job. And with Jay Turster, you get that same color for free. You know, this is not uh, tacked on to the price. You know, so uh, I just purchased one for Reverb because, uh, like I said, out of three guitars, I kept one. And uh, out of three of them, the only one, the only one was the on one of them. The only one of them was the Jay Turster. The other two were different models. So uh, you can't really go wrong. I'm very pleased with the one that I just purchased, and you'll see it probably later on in the cover. But uh, let me talk about the other two that I had to send back. Uh, the first one was, and it's a learning experience because you know. I like to try to give a fair shake as far as guitars before I make my opinion because if I never played it, how can I make an opinion? I can make an assumption. That's it. So uh, I was specifically looking for a Les Paul copy of a 1950s Les Paul with P uh, P uh, uh, what's the name of them pickups? Uh, I forgot. Uh, P something. P90s, P90 pickups, because I've never had a guitar with P90 pickups. So I'm like, let me expand my, you know, um, collection with various types of guitars and, and pickups and things of that nature. So I looked for three, four days, couldn't find nothing. And so I finally found one. It was brand new. It looked nice. It was a replica of the 50s, the Les Paul with P90s. So I purchased it. It was brand new. It was about $175 for tax. It was two. And the, the company was named Maestro. And I never had a Maestro, never played it. So I said, well, you know, what the heck, let me try. Since it's new, I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, the action is decent and it's a decent guitar in its new state. So I get it, get it out the box. I looked at it. I knew it was some garbage. You know, I am not a guitar maker, but I play enough for them to realize and be able to know the pretty decent guitar. And the problem with Maestro is this. Maestro to me should be a guitar that sells for about $75 in the kitty section at Sears or Kmart because that's how they're designed. They're cheap guitars. So I can't argue with you when you are in your classification. I got a problem when you try to pass yourself off as a decent guitar like Jay Turster and raise the price when you a piece of junk guitar that should be in Kmart. And that's exactly where they should be because I'm looking at the, the guitar and I raised it up and I'm looking at the bridge and it's it's it was made, you know, on the on the incline. It was like what it was like a rocket. It took off then it went back down. And uh up along the seven to eight fret until down the twelfth fret, the action's so high you can stick your fingers in between the guitar and the fret boy. I'm like, what the hell is this? You know? I'm pissed again because they're in misclassification, you know. And again, if I'm paying seventy five bucks at Kmart for this guitar, I'm not gonna complain. But I'm not gonna pay hundred and seventy eight dollars twice as much trying to pass themselves off as a legitimate guitar maker because they're not. They make garbage, you know. So I immediately contacted the guy and said, this guitar's going back because uh, this is junk, you know. And then I had a hard time getting all my money back. I got my 178 but then he didn't send me back my shipping and handling, my original shipping and handling. Plus, I paid 30 more additional dollars to ship it back. So I'm like, you don't think you're getting away with my money. So I had to contact Reverb and PayPal to force him to give me my fee for a refund. So, you know, uh, my dealings with Reverb will be almost probably near zero at this point because I'm like, uh, the experiences I've had have been really bad ones. And uh, it's not necessarily the site itself. It's the people that sell the guitar on the site. So they need to kind of tighten that up. So, uh, you know, that's the deal with Maestro. Don't buy no Maestro guitars unless you pissed off at somebody and want to send them some junk. But, uh, you know, it's a learning experience. So uh, the next guitar I purchased... I was trying to, you know, keep my my E30 E33 335 335 uh copy in my case around the winter time the guitars go crazy so I'm like I'm gonna buy another guitar that will be my kind of my beater. So I bought a copy of it uh, the company is Agile A G I L E. So uh look nice, you know, and the guy wanted like 224 so I bought it. It gets here same thing. The action is jacked. I mean, it's way up there at the, near the toy fret. And then as a upon further inspection, 
the neck has been removed because uh, those necks are glued on and then you have to paint over it. I look up and I see that the neck has been removed. And I said, dude, why are you trying to pass off some junk? Well, actually, it came like that from a company that I, I bought from. Well, you must be an amateur guitar player because this should have went back as soon as you seen this, which I don't believe. I don't believe some company sent him this, and it was in this condition. He thought it was okay. So I quickly sent that one back and got my money back. I was like, no more reverb transactions, you know. Uh, I believe that guy was just trying to pass off some junk. There's no way that he could have not seen the defects on that guitar, you know. So then uh, the third one came the day finally, and I'm, I'm happy, and it was a Jay Tursa, you know. The other two were two different brand models, you know, but uh, the moral of the story is, uh, you know, just be careful uh, with the reverb transactions because a lot of those guitars are just somebody trying to pass off junk. I seen a fourth guitar and I liked it the color and it was a uh, reasonably priced. It was used. And the only reason why I was going to probably purchase that because uh, reverb did this, you know, the additional thirty dollars that I paid for the shipping on the last guitar they reimburse me with reverb bucks instead of giving me my money. So now I'm forced to go back to buy more stuff off there. So I was going to use that $30 and a few more dollars just to buy this other guitar and call it a day. But now what I'm doing is probably find some guitar strings or something and for that 30 bucks and I spend a damn more of my money and, and, and get that 30 bucks back. But uh, I, I contacted the, the guy because I'm like, I don't want no more surprises. So I said, look, what I'm looking for is just, a, you know, a low-end guitar as far as price-wise that I can play and got pretty decent action. I'm not looking for perfect action for this price, but just be able to play. And he, he emailed me back and he said this verbatim, perhaps this is not the guitar for you. So in translation or essence, he's selling junk too. You know, it's like, who wants the guitar that they can't play? You know, who wants the guitar that the action is so high it's uncomfortable and painful to play? You know, either you try to work on it and fix it and then sell it, or just let people know that uh, this is a, a project guitar and you have to put some work in it. You know, but uh, I thought I would post this, this video as far as places to buy your guitar, perhaps, and places to stay away. And uh, that whole reverb thing and that, of course, Craigslist is like, you know, they're not even selling pretty decent guitars. You know, they're they selling, trying to pass off junk on you. Because, again, the first thing you want in a guitar, whether you know it or not, as a beginner or a mini player, is you want your guitar to be playable for you. You know, you want your accent low enough where when you play, it's not painful. It's actually enjoyable to play. You know, because again, what it looks like and actually what it sounds like is secondary. Because again, with the sound, if you're doing any kind of studio work, and even if you're just at home playing for the most part out of an amp. Your sound is going to be treated with reverb, compression, delay, phase, why, whatever. You know, so you don't really have to worry totally about uh, uh, the pickups and how it sounds. But you do got to be worried about the action. You know, you can't get around that unless you're in the pain and just like playing stuff that's uncomfortable to play, which I don't think nobody does or like or want. So until next time, take care. Thanks for watching.